I feel like Days Gone is a great example of my problem with longer games that I have now, which isn't that they're long. I don't, I don't mind a game being long if I'm going to enjoy the game. If that was the case, I would hate FF14. I wouldn't be enjoying Dark Souls 3 right now. I would have not touched Rain World and continued to play it off stream every now and then. I would have avoided these things, but I'm not because all of these games have a smooth trajectory through that is engaging. And I feel like Days Gone is a good example of a game that is engaging until it randomly is not engaging anymore, which is roughly around the halfway point. Is there really anybody outside of the gaming industry? Like the industry itself, not the like the, the player bases, but like in the industry that want shorter games? Or is it just shouting about wanting shorter games when really wanting something else, be it less crunch or higher wages, better release cycles for games, etc. And that's a conversation in and of itself. We're not going to go into like crunch culture and release cycles because it's been talked about to death. We've talked about it before in the past, and I honestly don't feel like talking about it today. What I do want to talk about, though, is it got me thinking about my, uh, I guess, opinion is how I would describe it anymore on longer games. Specifically, have I played longer games recently? And have I been preferring shorter experiences? On the surface, I think the quick and dirty and easy answer is yes. But I'm curious if anyone else feels this way. I don't think it's longer games have been less appealing to me due to time commitments. I feel like longer games have been less appealing because the normal long games don't have the soul and staying power that they used to have and maybe my tastes have changed but i have no interest in playing a game like code vein or or an mmo like black desert which that's a i feel like that's almost a different topic because black desert's problem is that it's a a grind fest not just a story driven game but i wasn't into monster hunter rise i what I'm not big on the idea of playing the latest Assassin's Creed game. I don't care about Far Cry anymore. I don't. I don't want to play uh, Watch Dogs reboot, even if Ubisoft tried to put one out. By that same logic, I would expect myself to say, I don't want to play GTA 6, but I'm probably going to play it. I'll probably enjoy it. And I don't know if that's because my, ta my taste has changed or if it's long games have consistently turned into almost front-loaded content slop. I think the most recent example I can give is if anybody's played it. But Days Gone was a zombie game that came out on PlayStation a while back. And honestly, you know, super good game. While we still wore the colors. All this time out in the freak show and shit like this didn't matter anymore. Highly recommend this. I have not played it yet. It's really good. It's I have a huge but that I will add to this sentiment. The game is fantastic. Farewell. Without Sarah. I knew that we were leaving everything behind what did you do everything that mattered was gone folks here in a lot of pain deke you find his stash you bring it to me to me deke you do that we'll see what we can do for you okay so quick little rundown the story of days gone the premise I would compare to Last of Us in how much personalization it tries to attach, not to the player, but to the character. It kind of focuses on Deacon the way that Last of Us focuses on Joel at the start. I remember it had a rough launch and the devs said, if you like the game to buy it twice, 
the reason why is Days Gone did not sell well, and you're right. The launch was rough, and we're never getting a, se uh, a season two. We're never getting a sequel. Dig, dig, bro, bro. And I know what kind of man he is, what he's done. Has he done any worse than you? Ricky? How about me? But it, it focuses on Deacon to almost a fault. And I think this is where it, it comes in regarding the but I have to trying to sell it to people. It's 40% really, really good story. Really engaging. You feel bad for Deacon. You do not feel like you are Deacon. It does a really good job of, much like Last of Us, making you feel like you are following this character, like you're following Joel and Ellie. And you're following Deacon along. He's trying to find his wife, who he made a deal, if you noticed on in the sequence with the helicopter where he gives her a ring. I won't spoil what exactly is said during that, but he essentially makes a deal via threatening somebody. And... The whole game is trying to figure out where the hell they took her. And in that journey, you're actually wandering around this really big world. You get a motorcycle that you can you can upgrade and customize. And it's fun. It's not in your face. It's very streamlined customization. Think of it like Borderlands vehicles. Just slightly more involved. So it's still the same system of you walk in. It takes you five minutes maybe, if even that, to get what you want on your, your vehicle. And then you're out and you're back in the game. You're doing things. You're doing fun things. You're not just navigating menus. The zombies were fun. They were actually a threat. This game probably nailed what you would think of as a horde. Better than any game I've experienced in a while. They were proper threats. If... You saw a horde, it was a problem. It became your number one priority to either avoid it or figure out what path they were taking so that if it is heading to where you're trying to go, you're not going to run into them later because the hordes would wander the map. They would actually just kind of skulk around and do whatever they wanted to. So you could be miles out from a horde that you know was miles away and 40 minutes later, you're still in the area. The horde is now coming to where you are because they they just wander around. Super fun game. Love it. The problem, here's where I'm going to get into slight spoilers. The problem is you get to the climax of the story and you think you're going somewhere physically. And you are going somewhere physically. But it's not a narrative progression. It is just a second map that it unlocks. And think of it like if GTA 5 was really good. Because it is. GTA 5 is really fun. But you're 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 near the end. You're about to tie up Michael and 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 uh Trevor's story. And Franklin is still kind of in the wind a little bit. You haven't wrapped his story up. And then to wrap up Franklin's story, after you just tied up Michael's and Trevor's, a whole new second city is introduced. And you have to do the equivalent of GTA 5 all over again. But it's one character you're yeah. focusing on this time. <laughs> Might not be the most perfect example, but hopefully it gives at least a perspective of how much the game just drops on you again out of nowhere. And you're ready for the story to end. The story has primed you to be ready for, for really just reconciliation for how shitty everything is. And then it goes, no, you have another map to go through. And you have to go learn all these characters that you don't care about. And Crash, this isn't about you. Don't be selfish. <laughs> hi, rats. Welcome in. Hi, never. Welcome in. Evie, hi. Welcome in. Again, I would still recommend this game. I still think Days Gone is great. I didn't beat it. I stopped playing Days Gone right after the second map got introduced. I met the first character then, or in that map, and I went, I don't care about you. You're not interesting. Every character that I cared about is back on the other map that I, I don't even get to talk with anymore. I, 
I don't care about anybody on this map. I thought we were close to finding his wife and getting some sort of resolution to everything, and we're not. I'm, I don't want to play anymore. I've already put 40 hours into this game. I don't want to play anymore. I don't think the problem is the game is long, though. Deacon feels a bit cringe early in the game, but he grows on you. That's why I like Deacon. He is... He kind of starts off as... Who's a good boy? Who's a good character to to use as a description or comparative for this? Whoa, whoa, you didn't finish opinion, Nalden. Boy, you lose. Good day, sir. <laughs> the opinion's still in progress. Hold on. He's okay. I can't think of anybody. I'll just describe Deacon. He's an asshole. He's a biker. He's a traditional biker, just dickhead at the start of the game. That's all he is. Deacon is not irredeemable, but he's somebody who you look at and you go, okay, you're going to, you're not going very far in life. You're going to stay in your small town and your biker gang, and that's all you're going to do. And you pretend that you have ambitions, but you're, you're not really going to actually accomplish anything. And the way Deacon grows on you is, yes, he's he's very rough, but he is fucked up due to his environment, and he is trying his best to actually change. You get flashbacks, and you get moments from before the game starts where you get to see that, oh, he was trying to make at least an effort. He wasn't a huge dick. He was just... A little maladjusted. And now that the zombies are a problem, he's resorting back to his default behavior in order to survive. Because of course he would. So he grows on you as it progresses. It's just, I feel like Days Gone is a great example of my problem with longer games that I have now, which isn't that they're long. I don't I don't mind a game being long if I'm going to enjoy the game. If that was the case, I would hate FF14. I wouldn't be enjoying Dark Souls 3 right now. I would have not touched Rain World and continued to play it off stream every now and then. I I would have avoided these things. But I'm not because all of these games have a smooth trajectory through that is engaging. And I feel like Days Gone is a good example of a game that is engaging until it randomly is not engaging anymore, which is roughly around the halfway point. Hi, Double. Welcome in. How you been, man? Been a minute. How's it going? I hope your week's going well. You're afraid to be here. You're afraid to be a part of something. We need you here, and that scares the hell out of you. We have to look out for each other. It's all we've got. You could have saved a few lives. There was no hope. There was no time. There was no room. Okay, there was, we'd already turned on each other when the hordes arrived. You're right about your old lady, Deke. You gotta ask yourself, what does it matter if everyone else is dead? Days Gone is so good. I, I can't not say it's a good game. It just drags on a little too long. And I've seen the ending. I, I, I know I didn't beat it, but I did go watch the ending because I didn't want to do the last 40% of the back end of the game. I, I did see the ending, though, and I'm very, very just disappointed, honestly, that we will never get a sequel, because it has probably the most interesting twist that I've seen in a zombie game in a while. And I won't spoil it for people that like zombie games, but it was really, really fun. It was a very fun twist that I didn't honestly expect, I thought it was a 
really unexpected path for the game to try and take. Ending was a sequel bait? Well, they intended to have a sequel, but the game didn't sell well. Dev who said it's player's fault the game didn't get a sequel really annoyed me? Oh, yeah, no. I, I don't remember the exact drama around the game, so I'm not going to get into that. That does sound familiar to me. The blaming of people not buying the game. Not the best way to go about it. Actually, here we can even just search this up just to make sure that I'm not crazy. Days gone, dev blames players. So if I Google this, I'm getting a Yahoo Entertainment article that says John Garvin, writer and creative director of Days Gone, believes the game received low critic reviews due to woke reviewers. The former developer of Ben Studio also blames the poor reception on technical bugs and, quote, reviewers should, who couldn't be bothered to actually play the game. I don't know if I'd say it was like people pushing for overly I, I don't know how you would even describe it anymore. i feel like woke has become such a what's the what's the word to describe something that's been said so much that it's lost all meaning as i feel like it's 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 gone from a buzzword kind of buzzword might work it's turned into a buzzword because woke went from something that i will say probably had some substance behind it to an outright negative thing for a long time and now it's just uh yeah i think buzzword might just be what we'll use right now <laughs> it's just turned into a buzzword and i don't remember any complaints around Some people who don't agree with me <laughs> like it, it's i don't remember any complaints around days gone being anything remotely classifiable as like the woke crowd on twitter or just insane people that are looking for sexism and things in games where it doesn't exist. Like it's every critique I saw of days gone was why is this game so busted on release? And then they fixed it and they did fix it to their credit. They did fix it. Days gone runs really well. It's very well optimized. Trite. I like trite. I don't know about banal. Banal's a banal's a word that I don't think a lot of people are gonna like. They gotta they gotta think Cancel about it for a second. strikes again. <laughs> but Days Gone is good. If you want a fun zombie game, go play it. Just don't expect you know. Don't expect a sequel. It just be disappointed with the rest of us when you get to the the final cutscene and you go. Holy shit, that's a good stinger. That's really good. Man, what a bummer. What a bummer. Play Dying Light instead. Play both. Dying Light's great. I haven't played Dying Light 2. Dying Light 1's great. I still think Dying Light 1 holds up. I will say this. Dying Light, the base game, I think is a solid 6 out of 10 narratively. It's an 8 out of 10 from the gameplay and the, the environment traversal. I love Dying Light. The... DLC area in Dying Light, which is what is that called? The Forgotten Dying Light One D. What is it called? What is that? What is that called? Ah, the following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the following was so much fun. I loved the following's little stinger at the end too. The following was so much fun, and the environment in the following. I, I'm gonna be honest. I think it's better than the city. I, I enjoyed the big open fields with my buggy that I could drive and the small little city areas I could just stumble across. I enjoyed the following much more narratively and mechanically than the base game. But the base game is so good. Finished Dying Light and jumped into the following, but I burned out. Never completed it. You should go back. It's fun. After you take it a break from it, go back and try it again. Don't even do the base game. Just jump right into the following and get through it. 